You'll hear it over and over again that this is an oasis in the desert. You look around and there's trees and there's water and there's ferns and mosses and things that you don't expect to see in the desert and it's just something really exciting. What makes Waco Tank special is that the Waco Mountains are an oasis in the desert. The material that these mountains are made out of collect water and so because of that people have been visiting this park for 10,000 years. This place is so special because you can step back in time and you can walk around and you can see why people have been here. You can see why this is such an important and special place. This place is pretty amazing. There's the stories of these people, the history of these people in every single place that we step. For us as native people, this is our mother. The land is us and we are the land. When I come out here, I feel like I'm visiting my mother or my grandmother. What makes it sacred doesn't start with us native people or what we left here. The sacredness starts with the place itself. So I would say for someone never having come here before, um, that that should be first and foremost in their mind. Coming out to Waco Tanks, there's plenty of things you can do out here. Of course, you can hike, you can climb. Bird watching um, is also a really popular thing that you can come out here and you don't really have to have any sort of experience in it. He's looking right at us. There's over 200 species of birds that are here year round. There's a curved billed thrasher. There's a blue grouse beak way up there. The thing that most visitors come for that we're most known for are our rock painting pictographs. We have pictographs that are thousands of years old up to modern historic graffiti like the 49ers that were headed to California looking for gold. Visitors can see over 200 Hornatomogion masks, either on their own in the self-guided area or by signing up for a guided tour. Our first stop is going to be right up over here behind the ranch house. I'll take you guys up there. There's a little story I want to tell you guys there. You can come out on a pictograph tour with a guide who knows some of the history and some of the interpretation of the imagery. You can see parts of the park that are typically closed to the public. Okay, so this is where we're at is called Comanche Cave. There are some white horned dancers, pictographs right here, this Mescalero Apache. If you're wanting a time period, most likely you're talking about maybe 1600. Could be older than that. One of my favorite spots in the park that I send people to if they're willing to go on a treasure hunt per se is Cave Kiva. You can crawl into this spot that you can tell that people have been crawling in there for maybe thousands of years. And then you can turn around and lay on your back and up on the ceiling of the shelter are these beautiful masks made by the Hornada Mogion people in different colors and different shapes and sizes. And it's just really neat to lay there on your back and reflect on the people that made those thousands of years ago and what, what they meant to them. Waco Tanks is this labyrinth of rock, just maze of fun and so much to get into and so much to explore. Bouldering in Waco Tanks is probably the best bouldering in the United States, in my opinion. It's everything super steep, you got these crazy caves and the formations of rock are insane. My favorite thing about Waco Tanks is probably just the vastness and I like going to a different spot every time I go out. When I go out, I explore, I look for new things. You always can find something under like some crevasse and it opens up into a huge room. There's just so much life out here and you won't find this anywhere else. It's really recharging, you know, there's so much chaos in town and then you come out here and it's so nice and chill and it's just like a great kind of meditation. 
I think when you come here, you should respect it and respect the people who have been here before you. And, you know, just trying to leave it as nice as you found it. I have yet to meet anybody that doesn't leave and have some sort of a, a different way of feeling and thinking and viewing the place. And I can't say that 100% of the time everybody makes an emotional connection with the place, but I think more often than not, people do.